Ladies and gents, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I trust that you are going to enjoy the next three days with us, Cindy Lee. Yeah. Now Purple Walls. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I'd like to take you through the process that we're going to follow for the next three days for assessor. Okay. As you know, it's a three-day workshop. And the learning outcomes are as follows. The course is, it's a, it's a tight one. As I mentioned, it is three days of hard work. Okay. We're going to go through the process of building your portfolio in the workshop. The nice thing about that is by the time you leave on Thursday afternoon, everything is done and dusted. What that does mean though is over the next two days, we're going to need to obviously manage time to make sure that we get all the knowledge components as well as the assessment components in within those three days. Now the learning outcomes I've taken for you directly out of the unit standard <coughs> that we're going to refer to. Okay? So you all know that it's an accredited bearing workshop and that you're going to go through a formal assessment process. You're also going to receive 10 credits towards a full certificate of education. Okay? Whether you choose to do the rest is up to you, but for the moment you will be accredited as a constituent assessor. Okay? <coughs> the learning outcomes are as follows. The first thing that we're going to cover is demonstrating an understanding of outcomes-based assessment. That is very much the theory components. What is SACWA? What is NQF? What is CEP? What are all these fancy words that assessors and training providers throw around? What do they mean and where do they come from? Okay. Don't have to look so stressed, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> okay. <coughs> if you're all today, I throw you with an acronym. <coughs> Lenore, you have the right to throw something at me. Okay. Because it is a new set of language altogether, and it's something that we need to get used to, but we also need to make sure that we're all on the same understanding. Okay. So we'll start off with demonstrating an understanding of outcomes-based assessments, and we'll we'll get to know where does it come from and how does it fit into the big picture of what we want to achieve in skills development and our roles as assessors within that process. Then <coughs> assessments follows a very neat and structured four-step process. That step process is plan and prepare for assessments. There's two components. The one is plan and prepare yourself. So just as if you're going to be facilitating a workshop, there's all that stuff that happens in the background before you even walk into a classroom. Exactly the same is going to happen there. You've got to be prepared for your learners when they're walking. Secondly, you have to prepare your learners. You need to make sure that the learners that are entering into the assessment process are ready for that process. Hence, all of you were required to complete registration forms and required to bring certain documentation with you today. I trust you guys are aware of that. The next component is we actually have to conduct the assessment. So we've planned and we've prepared with our learners. We need to go through the process of actually doing the assessment component of those activities. Okay. Next one. Once you've conducted the assessments, you need to provide your learner with feedback. So the outcome of those assessments is either the learner is competent or is not yet competent. Now we'll talk about what that means <coughs> in a little while. But the basis is if a learner is competent, they've effectively passed, if I can use the, that terminology, what we're comfortable with. If we're not yet competent, it means that the learner has gaps in terms of their knowledge or in terms of their skills. And we require them to go back and close those gaps. So through coaching and support, we help them to work towards competency. And that's exactly what Sharon and I will do for the next two days. So as we work through your portfolio and we do the activities, if there's any component that there's gaps, we will immediately provide you with feedback and you will immediately have the opportunity to close those gaps. Okay. The last component is review. And it's something I think that we're all bad at. And that is actually going back and reflecting on a process that we've followed. In a session, we're forced to do it. We're actually forced to go and say what worked and what didn't work within this assessment process. From an assessor perspective, from a learner perspective, but also from an overall project perspective, if I can put it that way. We need to reflect and say, what do we need to change from a quality process? Okay. Now, over the next few days, we are going to be completing these five learning outcomes. As I said, this is very much around knowledge, okay? But these four is around skill. So it's, it's, it's an application that you guys need to do. And that is done in a very structured manner. So instead of us just going, okay, we'll run along and go and do it, we've put together an assessment 
some process that allowed you to go through a structured means of gathering the evidence. Okay. And it looks like this. <coughs> the first thing that we're going to do, once we've started looking at some of the knowledge components, there's going to be an element of you completing knowledge questions. Because how else do I ascertain whether you actually understand what this outcomes-based assessment is about? So knowledge questions. That will be followed by what we call a portfolio of evidence. Now that always sounds very fancy, and people call it a POE and a portfolio and an evaluation. You know what it actually means? Paper. It's paper that the assessor takes and evaluates it to determine an individual's knowledge, skill, and understanding of that outcomes of the student standards. Okay. So you'll have a portfolio which will be papers, which you will generate and build over the next two days. Right. And the last one, this is the tricky one, is the observations. Okay. As you do these activities, so we will be recording them, and that recording goes onto your CD, goes into your portfolio. Okay. Now, <coughs> let me just take you back to this one quickly. As you sit here right now, I am an assessor, because I'm going to assess your portfolio, but you are all my learners. And I'm going to take you through this four-step process over the next three days. Mm -hmm. I'm going to plan you for assessment. We're going to conduct assessments. I'm going to run you with feedback. And you're going to have the opportunity to do a review of the assessment process. Yeah. However, you are also here on an assessor course, aren't you? So you will also be following this four-step <coughs> process. So as a candidate assessor, I'm going to assess your ability to do those four skills. So for the next two days, you will be required to actually go and work with your own learners. So I'm going to bring two individuals in that you will meet over the next two days. The first individual will come. You will plan and prepare that individual for assessment. You will actually conduct the assessment with them. You will provide the learner with feedback as to whether you find them competent or not competent. And they will have the opportunity to review the assessment process. And you will have the opportunity to review the assessment process. Now, I see two learners. You will repeat these four activities twice. And the reason for that is the unit standard is very clear that from a sufficiency perspective, in other words, is there enough evidence to know that when Sendele goes back to Woolworths tomorrow, that he's actually able to perform this, this, this job activity? You need to be able to do it twice. Okay. So it's exactly the same thing, but it's a repeat exercise. Okay. And these four things will be assessed in the following manner. Okay, but it's very structured and it's very neat. Okay. Any questions?